Ya baik, Assalamualaikum semua apa khabar? Boleh dengar ke? Any response? Okay, right. Uh, daripada Seremban dah, dah ada ke? Yang masuk? Ada. Okay, right. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, sekejap lagi uh, saya mohon untuk uh, kalau boleh lah eh, uh, buka kamera sekejap untuk kita ambil uh, apa ni sesi bergambar boleh ke minta uh, kerjasama <laughs> masa mula uh, ada masa last nanti eh boleh boleh doktor okay right okay thank you Okay, Ibu Rinda bersama dengan kita. Ibu Rinda, okay. Okay, wait. Okay, right. Wait, wait. So kita punya penceramah pun dah masuk uh, Sekejap kita uh, bagi sikit ruang untuk kita punya speaker prepare sekejap Okay. Okay, right. So, before we go further, boleh, can we open up our camera ya? Uh, before session starts, everybody. While waiting, everybody open up their camera for uh, early events, photo sessions. Okay, let me. 
uh, ready one uh, two three okay one more uh, one two three okay right thank you Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And good afternoon to all students and our uh, guest speaker. So it is a pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today who is going to share with us about the uh, probability and statistics. So uh, this is a, a fundamental topic in which uh, we as a actuarial science students background uh, should all be deeply uh, interested with this topic. So our speaker, although have spent uh, almost uh, his entire career conducting research in this uh, field of study. So Manarinda graduated from a bachelor and master degree in statistics uh, from Institute Technology Sepuluh uh, November in 2012 and 2014 respectively. So without uh, further ado, we would like to invite our guest speaker for today's session, Madam Rinda Noriswari. So, Madam Rinda, please, yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Zaki, for your introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Dr. Zaki said, my name is Rinda. I come from uh, Bina Nusantara University in Jakarta. Uh, I'm a lecturer of statistics, especially in statistics. Uh, fundamental of statistics. In this semester, I have class actuarial mathematics, which is uh, last week we have Dr. Zaki as a guest lecturer in my class, and uh, this week uh, it, this is my turn to be his guest lecturer. Okay, uh, before we start this explanation about probability, I want to uh, inform you all that probability is a fundamental in statistics, actu uh, actually especially in actuarial mathematics, uh, which is the, uh, you are all in this uh, major actuarial mathematics. Before I start, I want to share first my presentation. Okay. Is it my voice is clear? Is it okay? You can hear me? Yes, okay. Because uh, it is heavy rain here now. Uh, I already confused that my voice is unclear to you students. So I will try to open. Wait, wait a moment.
Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, Brenda. Uh, my topic for this day. Uh, this is me and Dr. Zaki, and this is uh, the topic for this day is introduction to probability. I want to see. Uh, we have topics in this day. Uh, the first topic is event probability and events, and the second one is counting sample techniques and additive rule. And the last one is conditional probability and bias theorem. Yeah. Okay. For the first one, sample space, event, probability, and events. Uh, this is the definition of sample space. Sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of statistical experiment and is represents by the symbol S. So, uh, as we know, in the probability, we have to declare the sample space first and we have to know what is the events, number of events, and then we can calculate the probability value. For the first step is we have to define what is the sample space. For example, uh, we have the experiment is coin a uh, flip coin. Jadi, uh, so we flip uh, one coin. So we have the sample space is head and tail. You can see. Wait, you can see this is the outcomes. All possible outcomes for the experiment flip coin is head and tail. So the sample space if the set of of possible outcomes set is means himbunan yeah. we write uh, the all possible outcomes within the what is sets up so this is for head and this is for tail okay and its outcome in sample space is called element or we can call the member or we can call the sample point if we have the two outcomes in the sample space or in the experiment, we said that we have two sample points. Uh, another example is tossing a dice. Uh, we have uh, one dice and we toss, and we uh, know that all possible outcomes for our experiment is the number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So when we define the sample space, we have to write all of possible outcomes. We write as Satu, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, uh, this is the information that H and T is corresponding to head and tail respectively. So this is for head and T, this is for tail. This is a example of sample space. An experiment consists of flipping coin and then flipping in the second time if a head occurs. This is we have to experiment the first one if we flip a coin. Then when the first experiment, the head occurs, we continue in the second experiment. Okay. If tail occurs in the first field, we have to die toss once. We have to toss once again the die. Starting with the top left branch and moving to the right along the first path, we get the sample point HH. For example, I want to, uh, what is, okay? This is the first experiment is flipping a coin. So the first experiment we have coin and we know that there are two possible outcomes, head and tail. If a head occurs, we have to flip in the second time. So we had occurs, we have to flip for a second time. So we have two possible outcomes again, head and tail. But if the first time we have tail occurs, we have to toss a die. We know that we, when we toss a die, we have six sample points. There are one, two, three, four, 
5 and 6. Okay? Are you okay, guys? Is it okay? So, when we write the sample space, sample space is set of all possible outcomes, we have the pair of possible outcomes or we have the pair of sample point. There are H, 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 T, H, 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 T, and there are T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. There are T1, T2, T4, T3, T4, T5, and T6. So, for the experiment, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sample point. That this is called the sample space. Sample space is set of all possible outcomes. We have to write down all possible outcomes first and we write in the sets. Okay. Ah, there is uh, the illustration of the three diagrams. Then we can use to draw how to the experiment outcomes. This is the first outcome. We have the first coin in there. We have two outcomes, a head and tail. And when the first flip, we have head. We have head. So we uh, flip for the second time. Head and tail again. So when the first flip is tail occurs, we die a... We toss a die. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is all possible outcomes, and we write in the sample space in the sets of blah blah blah. From the previous slide, previous I was explained. Okay, it's the same. This is the sample space. Okay, next events. Events in the is a uh, one component in the probability. We have to declare event first, and we can calculate the number of events. So in the uh, last step, we can calculate the probability value. The definition of events is a subset of sample space. As you know, we have the sample space, all possible outcomes there, and we have events. We can use uh, any notation. Usually, we use A or E is up to you. For example, we have A, event A, we define event A is a subset of, oops, sorry, I have deleted the mic. Okay. Okay, we have S, for example, dice, one, two, three, four, Five, six, eight. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong slide. Okay. Okay. And we have the events is a subset of sample space. So we have to define the event from the sub uh, the from the sample space. For the example. We have given the sample space as t, t more than zero, where t is the life in years of certain electronic component, then the event A that the component fails before the end of fifth year. So this is we have the uh, events continuous, we call this continuous, since we discuss uh, t is life in years, okay, and we can uh, write the A is T between 0 and 5. Since we define that the A is fails before the end of the fifth year. So we can uh, meet the five year. Another example, a possible sample space might classify an individual as a non-smoker, light smoker, moderate smoker or heavy smoker. Let the subset of smokers be some events. Then, all the non-smoker correspondent to a different events also a subset of S, which is we call complement of sets of smokers. So, we have four sample points. Yes, there are non-smoker, 
light smoker, moderate smoker, and heavy smoker. So we have in sample space, we have four. There is non-smoker, light smoker, moderate smoker, and heavy smoker. Okay. Uh, we define the event is non-smoker. So the what is the others of the sample space is we call the complement. Okay, is it okay for this slide? For example, we have the sample space. This is the die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we define the A is even number. We define the event is even number appear. Okay. So we can write A is set of since we define just only even number. So A is set of 2, 4, and 6. We have subset of sample space, 3 of 6. We only have 3 sample points of even A from 6 sample points of sample space. This is called event. Okay, next. The complement. Com complement of even A with respect to S is the subset of all elements of S that are not in A. We don't need here. Yeah? We can write our accent or IC. For example, the previous, the previous example, we have S and we have A. Even number disappear. Even number appears. So we have two, four and six so we can write the a complement is the element of s that are not in a so we have the rest of, of samples point one three and five because this is a and this is a complement this is the first example another example you can see it on my slide, we have the sample space is book, cell phone, MP3, paper, stationery, and laptop. And A is set of book, stationery, laptop, and paper. So we can write the A complement or A complement is cell phone and MP3. There is element of S and yeah, there is not in A, the rest of element of S. We call it the A complement. So, if you remember, when you are in high school, we have Venn diagram. For example, this is uh, the square. We call it S. And the circle, we have A. So, the outside of A, but inside of S, we call it A complement. So, we can... Later, calculate probability of A plus probability of A complement is 1. Since we know that probability of sample space is 1. You remember this. Okay. We will use this formula when we calculate the probability letter. Okay. Any questions until here? Is it okay? No question. Okay, okay next. The third definition of events is intersection. Intersection is, uh, we have two events, A and B, and they not A intersect B, in the events containing all elements that are common to A and B. Once again, we have sample space in square and we have two events in circle. There is two events A and there is B. And this is 
the intersects of A and B. A intersect B is there is, okay? This is the visualization of intersection. For example, in the tossing of a die, we might click A with the events that even number occurs. We have event A. There is even number. Okay, so we know A consists of 2, 4, and 6. And we have the second event is B, that a number greater than 3. So, we write B is number greater than 3. So, we write B consists of four, five, and six. You can see from the set A and set B, we have the same element. We have the same uh, sample point. There are four and six. You can see? There are four in four here, and there are four here. There is six here and there is six here. So we can write A intersect B is four and six. Okay, there is the intersection. Okay, we have the amount if we write into Venn diagram, we'll calculate, yeah. This is A, it consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there is 4 and 6. We have the B is 4, 5, 6. Oh, sorry. Since A is 2, okay, 2, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6. Now, there is the intersects of A and B. Is it clear? Is it clear, students? Yeah. Okay, next. Next one is mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive is we have a Venn diagram. By visualization, we have the two events. We called A here and B here. So there is no intersects for A and B. That is, A and B is empty sets. Okay. So, R, no intersect. Intersection. Okay. And also, we can call them disjoint events. Disjoint event is same with all Explosive, there is no intersection between two events. For example, we have event V consists of the A, E, I, O, and U, and we have C consists of L, R, S, T. You can see that two events, there is no same of sample point. Totally different, yeah? In V, A, E, I, O, U, and C, L, L R S T. So we can find the intersection of two events. We can conclude that V and C have no elements in common. So we can see that V and C, V and C is mutually exclusive. Or is joined. Okay. There is no intersection. This is the definition of mutually exclusive. Uh, in the visual, you can see A and B in the separate part. There is no intersection between two events. So we call A and B is destroying or mutually exclusive. Is it clear? Okay. 
continue. The next one is the union. Okay. Uh, for the first, we have complement. Uh, we have intersection. We have mutually exclusive or disjoint. And the next one, we have union. Union of the events A and B. We donate A, U, B, A. Uh, contain all the elements that belong to A or B or both of them. For example, this is yeah. For example, when we have events uh, those dry, and we have sample space, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we uh, declare that even A is even number of cures, two, four, and six, and B greater than three, four. 5 and 6 so the union a union b is the combination of the two events 2 4 5 6 so when we have Venn diagram by visualization we have two scenario we can have the separate events a and b and we can say a union b is all element in A and all element in B. We write in one set. This is. Okay. And for example, if we have the intersects of two events, this is. Okay. This is A and this is B. We can define A union B in the same way. We write all possible outcome or all element from A and all element from B. For example, from A and B, you have the intersect two, uh, sorry, four and six. So when we write the union, we only write once. We don't need to write two, four, four, five, six, 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 etc. Okay. We don't need to write twice. We only write once. Four and six only occurs one. Okay. Second example, we have A, A, B, C, and we have B, B, C, D, E. We know that we have intersection B, C, B, C. So when we write the union A, union B, we only write once for A, for B, C, D, and E. We know that BC is the intersects of two events. We only write once. Okay? This is a union. Any questions from you? No, madam. Okay. I will continue. This is... Uh, from the start until the last slide, we only speak or we only discuss about two events. This is example how if we have three events. You can see from the Venn diagram, we have three events called A, B, and C. And each of events, there is an element. A consists of 1, 2, 4, and 7. B is consists of 1, 3, 2, and 6, and even C is consists of 1, 3, 4, and 5. Okay? So, we can calculate or we can define the sample point or the element from the events. The first, A intersects B. This is regions 1 and 2. Okay? This is? We call it A intersects B, consists of 1 and 2. We have B intersects C, is 1 and 3. I will delete. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, we have 1 and 3. For B intersects C, the third one is... A union C. C, we have A. We can write down the sets of A. We have 1, 2, 4, and 7. 
okay the third year and the C we have one three four and five so the union of A and C we can write one two three four five and seven okay this is a merge of A and C okay the next one is B complement intersects A. We have B and this is B complement. So outside B, we have 7, 4, and 5. There is intersects in A. So there are 4 and 7. Is it okay? Okay, the next one. Is A intersect B intersect C? There is one. Okay. There is intersects of the event. We have A intersects B intersect C. So just only one sample point. Okay. The last one is A union B. We have to define first A union B. And we will intersect with C complement. We have A, we have B. You can write down the B consists of 1, 2, 3, and 6. Okay? So, A union B you can define 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7. And we intersect with C complement. We have C, 1, 3, 4, and 5. So the complement is there. 7, 2, and 6. So there is the intersect. 2, 6, and 7. 2, 6, and 7. Is it clear? This is the simple example have uh, three events uh, you can write and you can draw to Venn diagram first so you can write down the sample points each of events it will make easier I see okay okay there is all about the events we define the sample space and we define the sample point or the elements. We have uh, four. The first one, we have the sample point or sample space. We have the complements. We have the mutual exclusive. We have intersection. And the last one, we have union. The four is applied in the two, in the one, two, or more than two events. Is it okay? Okay, the next is how we calculate the probability value. If we have to, if we, if we have defined the sample space, if we have defined the sample point, so next we can calculate the probability value. The first, you have to know, you have to understand what is the definition of probability of an event. The probability of an event A is the sum of weights of all sample points in A. For example, we have to write down the number of event A first. We have to define how many there and how many there. So, we can define the probability of A. The value is between 0 to 1. It's not lowered more than 1. It's not lowered negative value and when we have the two event with no intersection the probability is zero and the probability of sample space equal to one for example if we have one event two events three events or more than three events we can uh, calculate the joint probability we write B, probability for A1 union A2 union A3. If 
A1, A2, and A3 is mutually exclusive event. So we can adjust, we can uh what is we can write PA1 plus PA2 plus PA3. This is the simple addition. And so on. Okay. This is the rules of probability. The value should be between uh, 0 to 1. And there is no intersection. Probability is 0. And probability of sample space is half to equal 1. So, for example, we have a Venn diagram. Square is sample space and the ellipse is even A. Even A, it consists of three sample points. There are one, there are, yeah, one, two, three. The first one is 0 0.1. The second is 0 0.15. And the third one is 0 0.3. So, and the A complement or E complement outside A, but inside S, we have one, two, three, four, five sample points. So we can write down. One, two, three, four, five sample point. So we can prove that probability of sample space is equal one. Probability A is 0 0.55. Probability of A complement is 0 0.45. So we know from this example, we can conclude that probability of sample space equal probability of A plus probability of a complement this this is the formula and we know probability of sample space is equal to one so if uh, in another we have or we can write p a is one minus p a complement likewise we have Probability of a, com a complement is 1 minus P A or probability of A. Is it okay? You can add all sample points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There is have to equal 1. And in this ellipse, we have 0 0.55 outside ellipse. We have 0 0.45. So it's proof. Okay. Okay. For example, we have okay, yeah, before we the before we discuss the example, I want to explain uh, this slide first. Probability of event, we can calculate the value of probability of A with a formula and this is N A, will be N A, and N is N S. So N A is number of sample point of number of outcomes in event A, and N S is number of outcome in sample space. Okay, okay, back to the slide. For example, we have experiment throwing a dice. You know. That we have sample points 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can calculate for each outcomes. We have 6 outcomes. We can calculate for 1 is 1 per 6. For 2 is 1 divided 6. And until we have to the outcomes number of 6, we have 1 per 6. Since... The sample space is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can add all the possible outcomes. Okay, so we have 6 divided 6 equal 1. This is uh, another proof of probability of sample space should be 1. Okay, next. From this formula, use this formula to calculate the example. OK, 
Okay. Example 1. A statistic class for engineers consists of 25 industrial, 10 mechanical, 10 electrical, and 8 civil engineering students. So, from this, we can know how many the sample point in sample space we have defined. Okay? We can write 25 plus 10 plus 10 plus 3. How many? 53. Is it correct? Is it correct? Okay. Then, if a person is randomly selected by instru instructor to answer equations, find the probability that student chosen is an industrial engineering major. We can select one person randomly from industrial engineering. We know that there are two, there are 25 students in industrial engineering. So from the A specific, yeah, we have an S for industrial engineering. There are 25. Okay, and we have to. We choose a person randomly. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We have what? It is in A. Okay. So we can calculate the A is N A. Divided by an S. So we have 25 divided 53. Okay, you can calculate how many value. Okay, that is the A. Is it clear? Oops, sorry. Is it clear? From the A, is it clear? Okay. Okay, next, the B. Uh, what? Uh, find the probability that student chosen is a civil engineering student or an electrical engineering student. So we have two options. There is civil engineering or electrical engineering. As you know, when we have uh, or in our probability, we will use union, okay? So, as a mathematical notation, we can write C, union, E. We write probability of C plus probability of E. Probability of C, we have to define first and C, number of sample point of C, divided number of S plus number, oops, sorry, I will move from E, divided number of sample space. We have the C, civil engineering. Okay, there are eight students, so we can write eight per 53 plus electrical, electrical is 10, okay, 10 divided 53 is equal to 18 divided 53. Is it okay? From the first one, we only calculate the one event. From the second one, we calculate the two events. First or first. This or this. C or E. C for civil and E stands for electrical. 
Okay. Is this the solution? You can check with your work. Is it correct? From the A, we have 25 per 53. And from the B, we have 18 per 53. C, union, E. Is it okay? And clear? Right. Okay. Good job. Camila. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, for the exercise, we can do the example one. There are fifth, sorry, there are five green and seven red balls in the one box. So we have one box consists of five red and seven, sorry, five green. Okay, I'm sorry. Five green. We have five green and seven red. Okay. Two balls are select one by one without replacement. Yes, without replacement. Find the probability that the first is green and the second is red. How you calculate this? Anyone? Anyone? Want to try this example? This uh, example? Without replacement. Without replacement. And there is the first is N. Without replacement. Alia is right. I write 5 per 12 multiply 7 per 12. This is the first answer. Is it correct? Any other option? Any other answer? This is the hint without replacement. So, when the first collection, okay, I'll, yeah. Five per 12, multiply seven per 11. Remember, this is without replacement. From the first selection in the, this box here, yeah, we still have 12. And we select one. So the rest of balls in the box is 11. So the number of sample space is 11 in the second selection. Uh, sorry, for 12. We have 11 sample point in the second selection. So there is green. The first is green. So we write five. Because there are five balls in this box. Five ball greens, yes. Five per 12. And the second one is red. We have seven red balls, but we have only 11 sample points. 11 balls. So there are the correct answer. We have 35 points. You can work, you can calculate by yourself here. Yeah. Okay, this is the correct answer. This is the wrong answer. You can read carefully. This is a state that without replacement. So there is a change of the number of balls in the box. Is it okay? For this example, okay, okay, example two, what is the probability of getting sum of seven when two dice are thrown? Remember, we have two dice, we have two dice, first dice, yeah, first dice. We have sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six. But please remember, two dice are thrown 
together. So we have sum of seven. Okay, we can write down the possible outcomes. First, we have one one. This is for the first die. This is the for the this is for the first dice. This is for the second dice. Okay. We have one, two until we have six, six. You have to define first the dice that result sum of sevens, which are which are we have six one we have two and five we have three and four is it correct this is we have uh one plus six is seven two plus five is seven three plus five sorry three plus four is seven is it okay So, how we calculate the probability? Anyone who can answer these questions? A is sum of 7, for example. Oh, yeah. So, we can define the A is how many sample points, how many outcomes we have from this experiment how many experiment how many sample point how many sample point Thirty six. okay oh sorry oh sorry sorry Wait. Wait. I have a connection. It's a solution. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is the solution. You can see, I will write slide. Okay, and we can discuss again. Okay, let's write the solution. Okay, the number of sample space is 36. There are 36 sample space since we have two dice the first dice is six and the second dice is six too so when we uh, toss the dice together we have 36 and we have to this is the outcomes for sum of seven one and six two and five three and four and there are the first one the first or yeah the second is next the first is five the second is two the first is six and the second is one okay this is, we have six ways six outcomes one two three four five six so the probability of a that a explains sum of seven is six Divided 37. Again, simple. 1 per 6. Okay. Is it okay? And is it correct? Okay. Any questions? No. Clear? Okay. Okay, next. 
find the probability of getting to heads when five coins are tossed. Remember, we have five coins are tossed in the same time. As you know, when we have one coin and toss, we only have two head or tail. Head or tail. And you have to find the probability of two heads. Of two heads. Okay? How we calculate this? How we calculate this? This, you can see the solution. Okay. We have to calculate the combination first. Since we only uh, define two hats. So we calculate five combination to two. We find ten. Oops, sorry. Okay. This is the A, for example. A is getting to head. And we know an A, number of A is 5 combination 2 is equal 10. And we calculate the number of sample space. Okay. Okay. This is no. This is not 25 here. Yeah. It's correct. I'm sorry. But to power 5. F and S is 2 power 5. Is equal 30. So, so, when we calculate P of A, probability of A, P A, is N A per N S. F 10 per 32. Okay. This, I have uh sorry i have to revise that okay okay oh uh, wait a moment I need to turn on the lamp first. How to stop share? Okay, that's all for the first subtopic. Any questions from students? Still no? Okay. I will continue the second subtopic. Counting sample technique and additive rules. I will slide show this slide. Okay, the, role, the first rule is multiplication. If an operation can be performed in n one ways, and if for each of these ways a second operation can be performed in n two ways, 
but we have two and one ways and n two ways. So from the two operations, we can calculate there are n one multiply n two ways. For example, the first die we have no we have to know that the die throw we have six ways we have six sample point we have six element okay and the second die also have six way so the pair of dice we have 36 possible ways six multiply six this uh this is explanation why the number of sample space is this yeah oh sorry this yeah why is uh, number space of a uh, number sample space of this example is 36 since we have two dice and we throw together the first dice is six ways the second is also six ways so six multiply six is 36 okay this for the example next example a developer of new subdivisions over prospective home buyers of choice of the door, plastic, colonial, and traditional exterior styling. So we have four options. Okay, the door, plastic, colonial, and traditional. And in exterior, we have ranch, the story, and split level floor plans. In how many different ways can Buyer order one of this whole. We calculate the number of combination. The first we have four, and the second one we have three. Runs the story and split level. To calculate the combination of this, we can use the tree diagram. For example, exterior style, we have four options: two door, plastic, colonial, and traditional. And the floor plan, we have three options: ranch, the story, and split level. So, you know that the first one, we have four ways. And one equal four, and N2 equal three. So, we have 12 combination or 12 possible hopes. So, a buyer has a 12 options, 12 combination, or 12 possible options. You can see the first pair is to door and ranch. The second pair is to door to story. And the third pair is to draw split level and so on until the last pair is traditional split level. There are two, there are 12 possible outcomes. Is it clear? This is the simple ways to calculate the combination. Okay, next one. If the first we only have two. Uh, options or two what is two events how if we have k events with the same rule we have n1 multiply n2 until nk right so we have three oh sorry if i write in the See the diagram, for example, the first one we have three, okay, the second one we only have two options, and the second one we have three options, and so on, until the last option. So we just multiply and one, and two, and, and three, simple. For example, Sam is going to assemble a computer by himself. He has the choice of chips of two brands. Okay, the chips from two brands, a drive from four brands, memory from three, and sorry from five local stores. So we can write N1 is four. And two is three, and two is for memory. Eh, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. I wrong.
and two is chips ya yeah. chips is two a hard drive four and three number of memory is three number of accessory is five how many different ways yeah we can just multiply all of uh number of ways so we multiply and one and two multiply with and three multiply and and four okay two multiply four multiply three multiply five so we have 120 different rate is it clear since this is a simple one okay okay the next one is permutation. Permutation is an arrangement of all or part sets of object. You can see the notation of permutation. We use P, M, P, R, and number of sample, or number of sample space, and R is the number of event. And the formula is M factorial divided N minus R factorial. For example, this is permutation application. In one year, three awards, contest of research, teaching, and service will be given to a class of 25 graduate students in statistic department. If each student can receive at most one award, okay, at least uh, only one student, only one award. How many possible selections are there? Okay, just remember, since the words are distinguishable, it is permutation problem. The total number of sample points is, we calculate the number of sample space or number of sample points. We have N, the total of students is 25. And we have three categories of words. So we have R object, well, three, we calculate N, P, R. N is 25, P, 3. Okay, you can use your calculator to calculate this. 25 factorial, 25 minus 3 is 22 factorial. And we can, we get the... 1300 30, okay there is the number of ways number of combination yeah remember there is number of ways we have big combination okay this is for permutation is it clear Okay, uh, actually we have one, uh, I'm sorry, I forget to, okay, I forget to write to the slide. We have combination, okay, beside permutation, we have combination, the notation combination of C. So if we have N C R is N factorial R factorial multiply N, N mean R factorial. This is the last one. Okay. We have permutation and we have combination. Okay, next. The second rule is added. Or we have, or we call additive rules. For example, if we have two events, A and B, and there are, oh sorry, A and B, and there is intersection of two events. So, we can probability of A union B equal to B. probability of A plus probability of B minus probability 
A intersects B. If the period is okay. If we have mood inclusive, if I draw to fan diagram, second scenario is this A and B. We also calculate P union B, but we have to remember that there is there is no intersection, so P A intersects B is zero. Since we didn't have A intersects B, so because this is mutually exclusive, you can see. If A and B are mutually exclusive, the probability of unions of two events, A union B, is only probability of A plus probability of B. In A plus B. Because we have no intersection. Okay? If we have N events, we call A1, A2, until A N are mutually exclusive can write P A1 union A2 union until A N this is just at all the events probability of A1 plus probability of A2 until plus probability of E N if only if A1 until A N are mutually exclusive if there is no for example from the previous example you can see the three actually we can calculate p probability of a union b union c we cannot use this formula since these events that events are not mutually exclusive. So we can define first the intersection of two events and intersection of three events. How if we have the illustration, you can go to the last one. If we have three events, A, B, and C, and the three events are not mutually exclusive. So the probability of A union B union C is probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus probability A intersect B minus P probability A intersect C minus P probability of B intersect C plus probability A intersect B and intersect C. So you can use this formula if your events are not mutually exclusive. Is it clear? Okay. Yes. Okay. For example, let A even that seven occurs and B even that eleven come up. No, a total of seven occur for six of the thirty six sample point. And the total of 11, only two sample points. We have to write down the total or, or sum, yeah. Total of seven. From the previous example, we have one, six, two, five, three, four. We have six one, we have five two, and we have four three. You know there are six outcomes here, and the total of eleven. We only have two, five, six, and Six five. There are only two outcomes. Okay. So 
from probability from this example from this explanation we can define probability of a is six per or we have uh, I read here yeah the a is six divided thirty six equal to one per six okay one per six and the b is two divided thirty six we can write 1 per 18. Okay? So, when we, uh, you have to calculate what is the probability A union B, since there are no intersection of two events, so we can uh, add PA and B. PA plus PB. 1 per 6 plus 1 per 18. Okay? We get 2 per 9. This is the question. What is probability of getting total 7 or 11 when a pair of third dice is closed? Remember, when we find or we use union and when we find n in questions, we have to use intersects. I think already knows. Everybody knows what this is, yeah? Is it clear? From the union probability? Okay. Okay, next. For the example four. A survey of magazine subscribes show that 45.8% rent a car. 45.8% rent a car for a business reasons. 54% rent a car for personal reasons. And 30% rent a car for both business and personal. Number eight, what is the probability that a subscriber rent a car during the past 12 months for a business or personal reasons. The first step, you have to write to mathematical notation. Mathematical notation for this is probability. We define B is for business. P for personal. Is it clear, yeah? We have to define first. So, Probability of business or, so we use union, personal, FBE, EE. Remember that the example is have intersection. Okay. There is a 30% for business and personal reasons. So from this explanation we divide pb 45.8 so we have 0 0.458 and probability of personal okay, 50 percent 0 0.54 and we have the intersection b intersect pe is 0 0.3 since there are 30 percent because there is intersection from this case when we calculate the union we use the formula pa plus pb minus a intersects b oh i'm sorry we don't use A and B because we already declare in the first. So this is B, this is PE, and this is intersect D and B. Okay, you can write 
here 0 0.458 you can write here 0 0.45 and minus 0 0.3 okay is it clear because there is intersection when you calculate the union you have to use this formula okay what is the result zero plus with zero point three zero point six nine eight eight is it clear okay next one for the B anyone want to try for number B what is the probability that the subtractor didn't run a car during the past either business or personal reason the subscriber is did yeah didn't wrap so How we calculate this? This is the complement case. Or you can already, this is yeah, uh, this is a union. So when we calculate B intersect, this is, uh, it mean didn't run for business union didn't run for personal ee ee complement we can write p b p e complement since we have probability b union p e so for this probability b union p e complement is 1 minus P, B union PE. We have B union PE is equal 0 0.698. So we can calculate 1 minus 0 0.698. So we have 0, 3, 0, 2. Okay, Alia, it's correct. Good job, Alia. Is it clear? Okay. I will continue. Okay. Next example. We have number of abundant calls. There are zero, one, two, three, and more than three. And the side column and the right column is number of calls. The total cost is 2,000. We can read the table. If the number of abundant calls is zero, we have 1,700 calls. If number of abundant calls is one, we have 120. If we have number of abundant calls is two, we have 80 and we ha if number of evident call is 3 we have 40 more than 3 we have 60 find the probability that no call has been abandoned so in mathematical notation we if we define this is a a is for number of evident calls a so we can write a equal zero. Equal zero, no calls. It means zero number of abundant calls. There is this is here. So we can write one thousand seven hundred divided by two thousand. You can write seventeen per twenty. Clear? The second one. 
find the probability that there are two or three calls have been abandoned. Two or three. So we can write down A equal to union R. This we have R A equal three. Because we didn't have the intersection, we can directly calculate B A equal to plus B A equal three. Okay, A equal to is eighty divided by two thousand, and B A equal three. We have 40 divided 1,000. You can write, this is 120 divided 2,000. We can make it simpler. 12 per 20. Secret. So, this is longer example, yeah? You can read first. Example 6. Let us consider the case of small assembly plant with 60 employees. Each worker is expected to complete work assignment on time and in such a way that assembled product will pass a vinyl inspection. On occasion, some of the workers fail to meet perform standard by completing workload or assembling defective product. We have two houses. Sorry. Sorry. We have two houses. The first one is workload and the second one is assembling defective product. You can define first, for example, even A is for work rate. Even B is the assembling effective product. Okay. At the end of performance evaluations, the production manager found that five of the 50 worker complete work late. You can highlight this information. Six of the 50 workers assembled defective product and two of 50 workers both completed work late and assembled defective product. So, from this information, we know that we have probability of A is 5 per 50 and probability of B is 6 per 50. And one information again. There are two of 50 workers but complete work led and assembled. This is the meaning of intersection. So from this information, I write, oh, sorry. I write uh, above of first. Okay. We have P, probability A intersects B, intersection B is 2. 50. Okay. After reviewing the performance data, the production manager decided to assign a poor performance rating to any employee whose work is either late or defective. So, for whose late or assembled defective product, they will assign a poor performance. What is the probability that production manager assigns 
an employee a per performance rating. So we have the performance rating is for who's late or defective. Okay, we have or. So from this case, we can write the mathematical notation P A since we have R, we use union B. Is it clear until here? You have to transform the case to mathematical notation first. So we will know what the formula will use. Okay, Alia, thank you. You found 0 0.81. I will write first. The A, probability of A plus probability of B minus probability A intersection B. Okay. This is 5 per 50 plus 6 per 50 minus 2 per 60. Okay. We have 9, 5 plus 6 is 11, 11 minus 2 is 9, 9 per 50. Okay, set equal, I'll write, this is 0 0.81. Okay. Is it clear from this example? Okay, okay, yeah. This is a longer example, but the simple work. Okay, next, example seven. You can see we have cross tabulation or contingency table. We have the first variable is status, promote and no promote. And the second uh, variable is gender, man or woman. From this table, you can see there are the number of uh, police who promote and here there is man, police who promote there is woman, yeah. and this is number of police not promote and there are men, this is the number of police not promote and there are women. And the total of police in this case is 1,200. We have four uh, number. We will do one by one the first find the probability that a randomly selected officer is men and you can see we have m is promote what is it this is is intersection since we have word and intersection because we have the contingency table, we can calculate directly. You can see to the men and promote, there are, this is 288. So for this is, we can calculate 288 plus 1,200 can calculate by yourself. Second one. Find the probability the selected officer is male and not promoted. You can go with men and you can go this row. There is not promoted and so six the 672 divided by 100 to 1000 please okay the next one probability that a randomly selected officer is woman and they promote 
you can go to this column, woman, and from what we have 36 officer. So we can calculate 36 per 1,200. Okay, the last one is woman and not promoted. You can go to this column and promoted is 1,004, sorry, 204. So we can calculate 204, 1,200. You can calculate by yourself. Okay. Is it clear? It looked like easy because we have supported by this table. If the case or example by the word by word for the uh, for like the previous example, you can define first. You can make a table by yourself to define how many police that uh, promote and is man, uh, police, there is promote, she is woman, and so on. You can calculate this one, this one. For your information, in probability, we call them, we, in, we, if we have the contingency table, the element inside the table, the red one, we call the Join probability. Okay. But remember, you have to calculate first. This is, yeah, per 1,200, per 1,200, per 1,200, per 1,200. And the value, okay. Yeah, The outside of table, there is, and this, we call it, we call it marginal probability. But remember, you have to calculate the probability first. For example, we have to calculate 960 per 1,200. Okay, 240 per 1,200. And this is per 2,100 and so on, per 2,100. So if the value change to the probability value, we can call outside table is marginal probability and the inside is join probability. It's only if we use post tabulation table or contingency table. Is it clear? Okay. Dr. Zaki, what time? What minutes again? Have, uh, we have about uh, 15 minutes more. So never mind, we just uh, finish off within that 50 minutes, then the rest will continue later. Okay, in our I will session. continue. Yeah, I will continue your your, your sessions. Okay, uh, thank you. Just second. finish off within 15 minutes, yeah? Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions for the subtopics? We are in the end of second subtopic. Is it clear, yeah? You can read the exercise carefully. Find the hint words. For example, we have to find and or the other exercise use or. So we so you can decide we use intersection or we use union to calculate the probability. Okay. The last one in my presentation is conditional probability and Bayes theorem. But if the time is over, the topic is uh, will continue by Dr. Zakia. Yeah. Okay. 
The first one, conditional probability. What is conditional probability? If we have probability to, if we have two events, A and B, and even B occurring when it is known the some event A has occurred. So, we know that A and B, A occur first. Then we can calculate probability of event B based on event A. Okay? It's called conditional probability. In other words, you can say we can calculate probability of B given A. Is it clear? For make it easier, I always tell my students, we have, what is, we have a separator in here. On the right or the behind separator is something given. And the front of separator is something else. Yes. We can use a simple illustration to make it easier. We can read P given A, the probability that B occurs given that A occurs. Or for the simpler, the probability of B given A. How we calculate this? You can see the formula. Probability of B given A equal to probability A intersection B divided probability of A. Please remember, if you do intersection, we have the rules. P, probability of A intersection B is equal to probability B intersection A. But this rule is not lowered to conditional probability. Since we have probability A given B is not same with probability B given A. Please remember this. Please remember this. So when you wrong right, you do a wrong calculation. It will be this, but you wrong this, so you have the wrong result. This is the restriction PA greater than zero. So is it not lowered? PA equal zero. Okay, tidak diperbolehkan. Nah. Is it clear? So this is probability B given A. How if we have probability A given B? You can write, you can write B intersect A or you can write A intersect B from the numerator, but this is probability B with probability of B equal zero. We have two formula. Prob, conditional probability. Okay. Is it clear from the explanation of conditional probability? Remember, conditional probability is just two, is only two events. How if we have more than two? It can be calculated conditional probability. Yes, it can. But you have to uh, what is read the material about bias theorem after this. Yeah. Is it clear for conditional probability? This is for example. 
you are given the table 2.1. This is contingency table or cross tabulation. We have two uh, category. Uh, this is a gender and this is the status. Gender is male and female. And the status is employed and unemployed. And there is a number of each category. For example, we have 460 for male employed and 40 for male unemployed. And we have 140 for female employed and 260 for female unemployed. For this case, we have the number of sample is 100. This is an S. Okay, and each case you can write down. One of these individuals is to be select at random for a tour to go to the country to publish the advantages of establishing new industry in the town. We shall, we shall be concerned with the following events. First, you can Calculate the probability so you can find the joint and marginal probability. All right, I give your example. This is male, this is female, this is employed, and this is unemployed. We change from this table to the probability table. We calculate in this cell is 460 divided 100 and the cell is 40 divided by 400 and in this cell is 140 divided 900 and this cell is we have 260 divided you can see in this cell, we have 600 divided 900. This is 300 divided 900. And in this, we have 500 divided 900. This 400 divided. This is called probability table. As I explained before, we have this is oops, you can see the color as I just read. We have four value. This is called join probability. And we have four value outside. And this is and this is is marginal probability. Yeah, this is because we change from the number of number of to the probability. So we can call this joint probability. And we call them is marginal probability. It will make easier to doing conditional probability since we know that in the conditional probability uh, formula, we have to find the intersection. So when we have the table, we only see the table. Okay. For example, let N A is the number of elements in any set A. This is, yeah, A, this is the same explanation of conditional probability. Same with the uh, previous slide. For example, we have A and M, A for employee, M for male. Okay, for this is, yeah. Jadi, so this is M, this is F, this is E, this is U. Okay, same with this. We calculate the probability M given E. We, this yeah, we can write probability 
what is it's called uh, someone okay, yeah? people people is male if given he is employed okay so you have to find the probability people or one person is male if given he is employed so as i said we have separator we had separator is given so this is employed and front of separator is us this is male okay so you can write probability m intersection e divided by probability of e okay you can use the information from this table this is intersection this is m intersection e and this is okay this is probability of e actually uh, I move to here, yeah. We have P, M, given E. We have probability M intersection E is 460. Okay, 460 divided by 900. Okay divided by probability of e we have 600 divided 900 you can do this from this calculation is it clear okay we only have 460 divided by 600 we will make simpler we have 23 per 30. Is it clear? We could. We have probability if one person is male, if given he is employed. This is the example of conditional probability. Okay. Okay, Dr. Zaki, I think I have to end this session since I continue, it will take more time. Is it okay? Okay, Dr. Rinda, thank you so much for the... Uh sharing session until this topic so uh, never mind uh, we just uh, uh, end the our session uh, until here and then we will continue uh, later on with our students uh, for the next sessions yeah so uh, once again uh, thank you so much uh, dr rinda if uh, i will open up uh, for any questions or any uh, anything that uh, student wanted to share over here anything before we uh, end our uh, uh, session today anything students from students okay never mind so I think they already shy and then we are okay. waiting for okay. Casting uh, uh, <laughs> to end the casting. So never mind. Uh, thank you so much once again, Dr. Rinda. My pleasure, Dr. Uh, Zaki. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank yes, you, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So can we have a uh, last photo session uh, before we end our uh, our session today? Can everybody open up your uh, camera? Okay, right. So, boleh ke? Still? Ada lagi ke? Okay. Boleh ke? Buka kamera kejap.
Okay, the one each. Ready? The rest? One, two. Okay, wait, wait. You don't go below. <laughs> They're still uh, working on the camera. Okay, right. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay. Uh, we go for uh, one more. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. So, thank you so much, everybody, for joining this session. So, once thank again, you, uh, Dr. Rinda, thank you and... Uh, we over here have two lecturers combining uh, uh, the classes, actually, Dr. Rinda. Okay. We have this uh, Madam uh, Diana Jufiza, uh, Juniza and uh, Miss uh, Nomaria over here. Okay, so thank you so much for the all students uh, joining this session. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zaki. Thank yeah. you, Miss Diana. Thank you, everyone. See you. Yeah, okay. yeah thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Salam alaikum. Thank you, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, 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 yeah.